Hey Harmonizers, welcome to another video with Alfie, our four-year-old Mustang from Choke Cherry, who is adjusting to the domesticated world and becoming a little superstar Mustang horse. So he is now coming out of the pen, doing some grazing. I'm going to show you guys a bunch of his first that he's uh, getting out of the pen and being exposed to more things. So this is grazing near our chicken coop area and he's seeing a whole bunch of different things. And what I'm really hoping to do is turn him out into the big herd with the other horses and hopefully get him to a place where now we can um, leave him with the other horses and he can come in with all the other horses for food. And so that way when we go away to California that he's still getting some attention from people and that he gets to be out in the bigger space with the other horses would be super awesome. So that's our goal for today and for our session. And we're going to do some touches and all sorts of stuff. So this is him coming into the arena and getting to be groomed for the first time. So he is standing in here. We don't attach them to the cross ties when they first come in because it can be um, overwhelming. He might try to leave as he tried to, you know, inch forward there. And I don't want him to be trapped or have to break cross ties. So like there, he tried to leave a little bit and he's not sure. So we're going to ask him to take a step back, which he figures out pretty good there and then go back to the grooming again. And he's doing awesome because there's another horse literally right beside him, another person grooming a horse. And that can be very overwhelming for Mustangs when they're first starting out because he's got somebody now on both sides of him. I'm on his right side, the other person's on his left side. And so that can be a lot for them to take in that there's so much going on. Remember, horses are claustrophobic by nature. So having that feeling of being surrounded can be really overwhelming for them. And so for him, first time in the arena, giving him lots of grass there, trying to make it a good experience for him. And I'm switching sides, going all around him. And you can see he's standing in a bit of a defensive stance, the way he's got his front legs kind of splayed out like that. Uh, standing far apart. He's kind of bracing for impact, so to speak. So he's kind of ready to pounce. He's not sure which direction. It's kind of like a, a boxer, you know, they got to have a wide base, like ready to move in whichever direction they feel they need to. So I'm just working on touching him. So I'm mindful of the fact that he's feeling a little bit overwhelmed and I'm still going to work on touching him, just being respectful about those thresholds of what it is that he needs to do. And then trying to offer him lots of positive reinforcement along the way. So that way he can start to chew a little bit more and realize that this is a pretty good space to be in. All of the things that I do with my horses, I want them to realize that if they try, they get rewarded and that I try my best to make it a pretty good deal for them. I don't want them to feel overwhelmed and get to a place where they feel like they have to run away from me. I want to listen to them about what they're ready for, but at the same time, encouraging them to do, do more and try more as well. So just because you get a little scared of something doesn't mean I don't want to do it. It just means I want to help you realize that it's okay, which can be a little bit of a different philosophy than some people, but I'm definitely a firm believer uh, just from following the research with human studies that the way we build confidence is we have to push in those uncomfortable zones a little bit and then realize that we're okay and that we we're going to be just fine for it. And that's how we build that trust. So I had sped up that footage there while I was doing his mane, just because it was a lot of brushing his mane for sure. And then I guess with Melissa standing there brushing or, um, sorry, sweeping. She, Alfie got a little bit overwhelmed and decided that he needed to move. So I just thought I'd slow that footage down so you could see how we handle that. And all we do is just politely bring him back into the space and it's like, it's okay. And then we're going to try again. And overall, like, I don't think that was uh, a huge threshold. He had a moment where he said, like, I just need to leave for a second. And, and my attitude is not that we can't go back into the cross ties and can't do that again. It's a, uh, all right, like you're okay. Like, let's try again. Like you can do this. And I really want to have that attitude with my horses of you're going to be okay. And I want to help you do this. And I want to try my best to only ask my horses to do things that I think they can achieve because then that helps them build their confidence. So I'm really careful about what I expect of my horses and the things that I say, you know, you can do this. I'm sure you can do this. Then I like to try to follow through on those things. So that way they know if, if Lindsay says I can do this, I really can do this. And that helps to build that trust and that confidence for sure. 
Brushing out his mane was definitely easier than brushing out pretzels, but that's to be expected because pretzel is seven years old and Alfie is only four years old. So she had three extra years of building up dreadlocks in her mane and he had a lot less time to do that. So his mane was not nearly as bad to start with. And you can see as I'm doing his mane there, uh, and as he's gotten a chance to kind of come back into the cross tie area, Melissa's no longer sweeping over there. He's settling. He's starting to relax his posture a little bit, sometimes lowering his head, um, sometimes doing some licking and chewing he'll do. And his posture starts to just change in general. And for the most part, he stands just really nice and quietly while I'm doing things. And even though, um, you can't see necessarily some people always in the footage, you can see some shadows there going back and forth. So there's still people moving around in the barn. Um, like there's a person who just kind of came into view of the camera there. So you can see there's still commotion happening around. It's not a perfectly quiet arena and doing some little, uh, foot touches and starting to do those leg lifts, which is great. Uh, still not working on picking up his feet. I've just been working on touching his feet. And so this is like the first time like coming down and lingering a bit more on those feet, which he's, his instinct is to pick up his foot. So that's great. Cause that's going to really help when we go to actually do his first picking up and holding of the feet, which is, uh, soon. So here we're just touching and he's lifting his feet and that's great. And I'm just releasing. I'm not actually holding his feet or, or doing anything with that yet. It's literally just touch. Um, he lifts and do a little release. We want to be really careful about the first time we go to actually hold the foot, because when you do that, you want to make sure the horse is totally relaxed because if you're trying to actually hold and trap their foot, then, um, you can make them get really reactive. So there you could see when I went to do his back foot there, he lifted his foot and then he thought about leaving and going forward. And that's kind of the perfect example of what I'm saying is if you try to actually grab that foot, you can imagine how much worse that would be. He would probably like really pull forward and really pull away. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to overwhelm him. We want to keep him thinking that this is okay. And we already know he's a little bit jumpy from being in here. So there you can see he picked up his foot. I'm not holding his foot. You get a really good view there of what I'm doing. I'm literally just running my hand down his leg. And then when he lifts, as long as he lifts without trying to kick, like when he, he went to kick the first time there, then I just do it again. But otherwise he just puts his foot back down and that's getting him used to the idea that we will, um, get into picking up his feet in the future. So I end up putting him out in the little pen here. He gets to have his dinner and you can see he's able to go in the small pen. This is like the pony pen and he's really happy eating his dinner. So I'm feeling really good about where he's at. He's pretty easy to catch. He is um you know taking the grain really well. So I'm like, "All right, it's time to get Laura who is our uh, main chores staff to take him out for the very first time. So this is Laura catching him from the pen and you know, he's a little jumpy there, but you can see he follows Laura really, really easily. So this is going to be putting him out into the herd for the very first time. So instead of going back to the Mustang pen, he's getting to go back with the other horses walking by the wheelbarrow there. There's other people all around. You can see other horses. That's Ginny on the right there getting her dinner. So he's going to go out into the big pens. So this is pretty exciting. And you can see just how, how easy he is to lead out. Uh, not like pretzel who was like very slow and cautious. He just, you know, walks right with Laura right in, like he's a, a normal horse, so to speak. And so he gets to go off with his buddy. So we're going to hope that they're able to catch him while I'm away in California and that he'll be able to keep getting his dinner every day. Remember to subscribe and check out harmonyhorsemanship.com for even more learning.